All right, let's move on now to another very, very important, concerning story. Though it is a long way away, it has ramifications here. Uh, New Zealanders, for God knows what reason, seem to think it's something they should march about in the streets, though I question the motivations of those who march. It seems the same group of people who got into Black Lives Matter. We're talking, of course, about the Middle East. Um, the incursions on the 7th of this month by Hamas, which is the authority in um, Gaza, which is an independent territory. Hamas elected uh, as the government then suspended all elections. Um, and the Israeli, Israeli troops massed on the border, some incursions. We've just heard they're free to hostage, but about 190 people held hostage by Hamas. Um, claims of war crimes uh, and terrible goings on from both sides and a huge increase in the military tension in the Middle East and that part of the world including the Americans making uh, surgical uh, airstrikes on what they say are mili military targets in Syria and Lebanon um, sometimes I get past worry but should we be worried to find out we're joined by our resident Foreign Affairs, Geopolitics expert Robert Patman. Robert, lovely to see you again. Good um, morning, Sean. All Good right. Day. Is this, gosh, so much going on. Um, how bad is this? Because one gets the feeling, despite all the media coverage and, and the high emotions and the hype, actually, mm, everyone's staying pretty well with inside, if you like, certain rules at the moment. Oh, I think that's a, a pretty permissive interpretation. I think the situation is pretty catastrophic and uh, uh, has the potential to spread, which you alluded to, Sean, in your opening remarks. Um, <clears throat> this is a, you know, uh, this is almost a classic case in international relations terms of two wrongs not making a right. And uh, we had this appalling and horrendous Hamas terror attack, which has been, uh, has triggered a huge, um, some might, analysts would say, I suppose, disproportionate retaliatory uh, bombardment, which has killed close to 8,000 Palestinian civilians. And as you indicated also in your introductory remarks, the Palestinians, uh, they may have voted for Haz uh, Hamas back in 2006, but Hamas has not had any elections since then. No. And um, many Palestinians... Uh, really detest Hamas, but it, when you don't have elections, you don't have much chance to get them out. And uh, there is a feeling that, um, in retrospect, the Israeli response should have been much more targeted against Hamas rather than the sort of um, casualties that are occurring. I mean, put this in perspective, Sean, uh, more than uh, close to 3,000 Palestinian children have died since the 7th of October. So this is a a catastrophic uh, outcome and uh, there, there appears to be in terms of international opinion it seems to be shifting um, from a groundswell of support and sympathy for Israel on the 7th of October to one in which many people particularly in the global south see that Israel is perhaps now going over the top in its response and not targeting the people responsible for what occurred, but uh, hitting lots of other uh, civilians in the process. It's got to be said, with the best intention, um, it's very difficult to surgically target um, groups in a highly densely populated yeah. area. And let's, let's just be clear about this. Israel's been at war with Hamas long before the events of the 7th of October. Uh, Hamas has been the subject of an air, land and sea blockade since 2006, conditions in uh, Gaza Strip have been very, very grim for a long time, something which plays into the hands of Hamas, of course. But uh, this is a, a really desperate situation. The thing that I think is particularly sobering is once again, we have a rerun of what we saw in the Ukraine, where the UN Security Council is impotent and dysfunctional and unable to do the job that it's there to do which is to be a reliable barrier to escalating violence and war. Yeah. Um, what are the US doing there? Why have they got two carrier groups nearby? 
Uh, I well, the, the Americans say that that's a deterrent uh, strategy. I think there's two aspects to that actually. Uh, in declaratory policy terms, uh, the Americans say that those aircraft carriers are there to deter the prospect of Hezbollah and um, its patron, Iran, um, taking advantage of pre Israel's preoccupation in the Gaza Strip. And there have been exchanges of fire between Hezbollah and um, Israel. They have been, however, uh, reasonably contained. Mm. So that's one explanation. The other explanation is that the Americans have 22 hostages uh, amongst the 230-odd that the Hamas terrorists have taken. And um, they want to be, you know, in a position to um, be able to react if those hostages are released or they can do things locally, uh, maybe using special forces. Um, they, they want to have that capability close by. But I think it's. I think the major reason is the correct one, which is, it, it's to give reassurance uh, to Israel that it will try to prevent uh, the escalation of the conflict, try to deter Iran mm. and its ally Hezbollah getting involved. Yeah.